The Canadian bank regulator publishes a big report. Published a big report. Oh, serious stuff. Um, OSFI, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, is the bank regulator in Canada. They are they are in charge of banks, trusts, every, not credit unions, but banks, trusts, and also the mortgage insurance companies like CMHC and Canada Guarantee and Sage. And uh, this is the op the regulator who looks after all of them. The boss, Peter Rutledge, big report, worried, worried about stuff, worried about high rates. Yes, rates are high, much higher than they were two, two, two three years ago. And renewal cliff, maybe 2025, 26. So many renewals in 2025 and 2026. It's an incredible number. I think it's nearly 70% between now and the end of 2026, it's, it's a huge number. And big mortgages. Yeah, big mortgages. Yep, okay. So those are the issues. Also, also, water is wet. Like, for Christ's sakes, we knew all this. We knew all of it. We knew everything. We knew everything. It's all known. We've been talking about this stuff for two years, at least. I mean, but it takes two years for the... Bank regulator to produce a report? Um, yeah. Okay, fine. Whatever. Look, it's a big it's a big operation now. It's over a thousand employees at uh, the bank regulator Rossi. Uh, they're doing audits all the time. They're they're digging into banks. They're because you know what? If, if you let, I think that's about double the employees from eight years ago. Probably double, close to double. Um, because you got a lot of people. They gotta they gotta make work for themselves, right? They gotta they gotta do stuff. What's the reality of all this? The reality of all this is it's true. It's absolutely true. Mortgages in BC and Ontario particularly are big, sometimes huge. Residential mortgages can be over a million dollars, right? If the house prices are over a million dollars, eventually the mortgages are going to get close to a million dollars. Not all of them. We see a lot of small mortgages. Don't get me wrong. 200, 150, 50, they're all out there. But still, there's a lot of big ones. There is a bunch of them renewing at the same time in the next two by, by the end of 2026. And the rates are high. Rates will fall, but they ain't going back to 2.49. You know, if we really think clearly about it, rates will probably only come down to the low to mid fours. That's going to be the reality for most people. So it's still going to be a lot more of a mortgage payment than it is when you got the mortgage back two, three years ago. So that's all true. But here's what I got to ask. Hey, Osfi. Hey, Peter Rutledge. Where the fuck were you in 2021 when prices on Ontario went up 30% in a year for the love of Jesus? Okay, like it's a huge number. It's a massive increase. Nobody just said a peep. Not a peep. Oh, look, house prices going up. So... That would have been the ideal time to jump in and say to every bank in this country, you can't borrow a down payment from your existing house to buy a rental property because investment properties went nuts in 2021, first quarter 2022. They were pretty nutty at the second half of 2020, for God's sakes. There were so many people buying rentals and second homes with borrowed money from their existing home. Because when the price goes up 30%, you got a lot of access to borrowing. If they'd have just said no to that back in 2021, no, you can't borrow money. You can't buy a rental property using a down payment as borrowed money because that's effectively 100% financing never should have been allowed. Look, you didn't do it. Can't go back in time. Let it go. So Peter Rutledge, Osvi, you want to do something now as opposed to just auditing the hell out of people and auditing the hell out of banks and talking and adding on tier one capital and adding on, oh man, the capital requirements. Every time they look at a bank, they want to have more capital. In, in, in theory, that's a good thing. Our banks should be well capitalized. They are pretty well capitalized, but hear me out. Are we starting to reach a point where they're better capitalized than ever in history, like by a lot. And this is the thing every borrower, every consumer should know about vast levels of capital within banks. That means they make less profit, so they're going to charge you more. Like, 
get this straight. Banks control the finances of Canada. The six big banks do 86% of all the financial transactions in this country. 86% of all the financial things that happen, borrowing, transact, lending, okay, credit cards, okay, investments, you name it. 86% of those things have the touch of the big six banks on them. So they will find a way to be very profitable if you force them to keep increasing their capital. They're not going to take it out of their profits. They're going to find a way for the consumer, the borrower, the customer to pay more. So the profit remains the same. So the idea of extremely highly capitalized banks doesn't ever do the consumer any good. So let's start thinking about this. Why don't we just do some smart things? We want to protect the future for when interest rates go down. Let's think about the idea that you can't borrow money to buy an investment property. And let's realize that a sensible, standardized approach to reamortization for people who can't afford their rate increase should be codified. It should be standard practice. It shouldn't be that people have to scream for it and yell for it. And Minister Friedland says, oh, you got to do it. And then the bank regulator says, I'm not sure we should do it. Let's get this thing settled now. Settle it now. Settle it this year. Settle it soon. Yes. Request a return to 25 year. Request a return to 30 year. Granted. You had it. You're up to date. You're making your payments. It's time to renew at a higher rate. Granted. Make it automatic. Look, it's not going to fix everything. But for once in history, bank regulator, be proactive, please.